I have uh, a. <laughs> Hello. Are you are, are you out of uh, top left cards? Hey. No recording. We do need to do a reorder on those. I have a whole box in my card. Really? Oh, great news. Okay. And then I got another half a box at home. Okay, good. So really, yeah, we're getting close to the. If you want to bring that up here and put it on the porch, I can put it inside of my little shelf. So the question, Chris, has been raised of whether or not you have a sign of form. Yeah, part. Feel free. The question has been raised of whether or not you could sign the membership form regarding the initiation of violence. Whether you could honestly sign it. Oh, I can honestly sign it. And I've never known Campbell to dishonestly do anything. So. And Johnson specifically requested that your character uh, promote peace and renounce violence. Is that a fair? Right. So. That's uh, that's what's well. That's why you've been asked to get. If if uh, if I had, I what, where have I? Can we clarify where you think I'm advocating initiatory force? I think the paperclip thing. I think the postman thing. I think the Dazzy? Hey, the come here. Las Vegas thing, to a certain extent. Okay. Well, I've been, I've made it all pretty clear why my stance is that I haven't in, in, advocated initiatory force in any of those things. It, have you read? what I've written about that and what is specifically unclear. So what I think is unclear, and I think it's unclear, I, th I think that two things. I think that generally a, a reasonable, rational person could go and read your blog and immediately come away with the impression, they're not going to come away with the impression that, oh, this is a peaceful person advocating peace. That, that essentially that the character, I think, poses a risk in that it crosses the boundary, whereas I think that you de-escalate violence you, as a person, yeah. in personal situation, but I think the character is an escalator. And I think that the character, people don't generally distinguish, make those distinctions, and I think it puts us all at risk. Well, I think the, 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 the question of escalating conflicts is not a question of initiatory force, is it? Right? There's a difference between escalating a conflict and initiatory force. I don't, I don't see how uh, the rejection of initiatory force requires one to de-escalate a conflict. If someone creates a conflict and then you escalate the conflict, you still have an initiated force. If somebody, uh, you know, I'm speaking from, from the grounds of non-aggression, okay? So it's a philosophical moral question. If a person initiates <coughs> force against you, are you morally obligated to de-escalate the conflict? And the answer to the question is no. I think you're morally obligated to uh, de-escalate the conflict if you are someone who is purporting to advocate if you are purporting to advocate peace and you're defining that as something other than non-aggression, then by all means, define it however you see fit. I'm talking about non-aggression. So the que if the question is whether or not I can honestly sign a form that says I do not advocate the initiation of force, the answer to the question is yes. If you have a different idea as to what people should do, then perhaps the answer to the question is no. But if the question that is being raised is whether or not I can honestly sign the form, the answer to the question is yes, because I don't advocate the initiation of force. Well, that's one aspect of the form, but I think there's another aspect of the form, which is promoting peace. Can we introduce a copy of the form as evidence? Yes. <laughs> I would be happy to read any sections in question out loud to clarify the content of the form. I think that's a good idea. Where is yeah. it? Well, instead of passing the form down, <coughs> Okay. Uh, I agree that peace is my goal and I will not advocate for the initiation of force or violence for any reason. Which is, peace is we my can goal. all agree this, that this Campbell has does been, it, right? This has been this pretty is, well established. I've talked about the non-aggression yeah, yeah. okay. That's good. I agree that I will seek peaceful non-state <coughs> conflict resolution should remember this dispute to arise. Well, I think that we can all say that I've never tried to resort to violence with any of you, nor have I advocated violence against any voluntarians. We're calling the state in... We're calling the state. That's not yeah. how I seek to solve my problems. I agree that, as a member of the CAC, I will be allowed to bring guests whom I reasonably know to support the principles of non-aggression and, and peace. Okay. So, uh, so those are the instances in which the word peace appears. Yeah.
The question, you know, it, it would seem to me that, like, if people are opposing my membership for, for some reason other than initiation of force, then let's talk about that. Because there's no rational grounds to say that I'm advocating initiatory force. That's not accurate, and everybody who's said that is, you know, why not? Being inaccurate for whatever reason. One of the issues that I specifically that I, like, broached was the fact that in the first week that you moved to Keene, I've never received a death threat before. I received a death threat because someone confused me with you. Okay. And, and came up to me and said, you know, hey, did you threaten my wife? Did you say that you had a gun and you would shoot her? You know, whatever, because they thought that I was you. I well, I also, I also, the guy who said that, you know, was miscategorizing something that was said. Where I was, you know, pretty clearly like, hey, I'm no threat to you if you're no threat to me. But they, they were asking if they should buy bulletproof vests. Right. And I said, well, no. You know, if you want to shoot me, get a sniper rifle because I carry a gun and you don't right. want to, you know. So this is, you know, if people misinterpret things that we, that anybody says or does, I mean, I don't see how you can hold me responsible for the lies of Stop Free Keen. Graham Colson has been mistaken for me in the past, right. and people have threatened my life. Uh, many of us have been threatened, our lives have been threatened. Yeah. How many of us have had our lives threatened? We have in a in and you're out as a public persona, there's a chance someone could hurt you. There's a chance that they um, and I, I believe that the chances of that, by the way, will be less when there's a... we have a show of hands of all the people who have had their lives threatened here? I don't okay. know if I Can we agree not. that because our lives were directly threatened, someone who is mistaken for us might receive the same threat? So yeah, I would say that that's, that's an issue with many people. Well, I would say that if you're not willing to so face I, I threats, you shouldn't be well keen as a like public you, because you're not going to be looking like you. <laughs> or anyway, as a publicly visible actor. Because if you started getting visible in Concord, no, no, if you start getting visible in Manchester, people are going to yeah. threaten you there too. Yeah. I've been, I've, been, I've been threatened in New York. I mean, it's, you know, it's... The, thing, the point that I'm bringing up here, though, is that the interaction that came from that is not a peaceful one. You know, that, that didn't come but that's not because there are people out there who are advocating yeah. initiatory force. Those are our problem, right? So these people are dishonest and violent. I, to, to hold me accountable for the actions of dishonest, violent people you know, I just don't see how that makes any sense because they're going to be dishonest and violent whether I'm a member of your organization or not. Well, mm. but, the, no, but not that's on them. That's they're not, trying to and, and, as we've, and as we've seen, look, I mean, you know, Rodney has come around threatening a number of people here, and look. Can you Rodney, honestly tell me that your blog doesn't have the intent to piss off statists? My blog has the intention to piss off statists. I don't Does think that, that statists are going to be happy about the transition to a free society. I expect them to be extraordinarily upset about that. So does that escalate or de-escalate violence or does it promote peace? It promotes non-aggression. That's agree. why I'm seeing hundreds of thousands of people coming to the website. And the, and the goal here would be to turn some of those people into movers. It's extraordinarily difficult to do when, I'm, when I have the public perception of a pariah. And the fact of the matter is I'm not, right? What we're seeing here, I don't know exactly what your vote count is, but we had a meeting earlier and I know that there's support here. So the fact of the matter is most of the people here actually want me to come into this place. And there's a minority of people who are attempting to keep me out. The fact of the matter is I'm not a pariah, but, but due to the way things are set up, I'm given that public image. If that is not in existence, then it will be a lot easier for me to bring movers here. If we want to increase our numbers and have a greater chance of success, then it would stand to reason that the best course of action would be for me to enter the club. I would point out that I would not want people who would move based on the words and actions of Chris Campbell to be associated if with If I come I into this room, you're going to be leaving anyway, and the problem is solved. I kind of feel that way, too. Most of I, I like you, Chris, but a lot of the people I've interacted with that are sort of like on the Cantwell side don't have the brains that you do, right? Like, I, I get what you're saying. What I get from them is freaking torches and pitchforks, and I don't need it. Well, some of the people <laughs> that are on my side include Will Rockwell. I mean, you know, th there's there's pr certainly a number of, you know, very intelligent people who are very sympathetic to a lot of the things I say, and then there's some of the things that are not, right? So, I mean, there's... there's uh, again, I think it would be negative to hold me accountable for the perceived ideas of people we don't know who may or may not be members of my audience. Personally, when whether or not uh, people are going to move here isn't a factor in my decision to vote for you. Uh, my, fa my main factors have to do with just, you know, I think it's the right I thing say if Cantwell do. brings Lou Rockwell here, we put him in the club. Even <laughs> 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 Just to clarify, you had said you wanted to vote to remove his ban earlier. I 
believe he should be allowed on the property. I think it's silly that he can be on one side of the gate and not be on the other side of the gate. I think it looks like makes us look like a bunch so of fucking idiots. So just you're you're, very, you're really putting a vote in his favor to remove the ban. I would not vote for him for membership. Okay, got no. it. Those are two separate issues. Yeah. But you're you're not, not you are also not blocking on membership. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what that means. <laughs> you can you you have the option to not vote on my membership or the option to block my membership. So you're not giving a nay, essentially. Or approve the membership. Or, or approve, or approve membership. your membership. It seems but like that if you have the option of letting him on the property, um, and you'll see how that goes for a month or something yeah. like that. I mean I don't really see why are one you, has to be doing all all this at once. Are you are you well the there's there's a number of reasons for it, but I mean are you voicing opposition to my membership or just non support of it? Uh, at this point I'm not gonna voice e in uh, opposition to your membership. Okay. Okay. So he's abstaining I'm sure that there's plenty of people that will. And that, <laughs> uh, have any, that, any thoughts the way about it works, that means there will be a couple week gap before your membership thing comes to fruition because there are more blocks on it than there are. Right now it's one um, week. It'll be, uh, so it's, so it's, basically that gives you a week to chill out here <coughs> and you know, when, when that happens, to chill out here and maybe, maybe convince some of the people yeah. through you know, either liberal application of booze or rational conversation, <laughs> whichever comes easier to you. Um, <laughs> and I would also say that uh, when a white supremacist donated $500 to uh, Ron Paul's campaign and he was asked about it, he said, well, they don't give me money because I support them. They give me money because they support me. And, and that's a different thing. And I think the same thing applies to holding anyone accountable for their audience, you know. Um, I think most of the shit talking assholes are probably not likely to move anywhere because people who talk shit aren't likely to Even if to they come up and visit, they're well, going to meet the rest shit, of us and twice. go, I can't live with these jerks. <laughs> Can you tell them who's blocking Um, Sure. Uh, unless somebody objects to it. I have no objection. Blockers currently for removing your ban are Keith, Garrett, and Johnson. And then to uh, block your adding as a member, Keith, David Crawford, Garrett, and Johnson. I'll say I, I voted to block you because of consistency with Keith and the NAP. Well, well, he's not blocking you for the, he's not blocking you for membership. He's, no, he's blocking he you for unbanning. Sorry, he's not blocking you for banning, he's, or unbanning, he's blocking you for membership. Oh, if, you're, if you have some perception that I'm inconsistent in the non-aggression principle, then your perception is incorrect, but I can't do anything to change that. Well, well, except I, I, I lots of opportunities to show your character over the next few weeks right, while you're exactly. here. I, you know, mean, I think letting you, peaceful you are. I think that letting you get unbanned first and, you know, see what happens in a month will, will really, you know, help. And, the thing uh, is, I, I, I was going to say, I, I, Ian's words and deeds, and you know, out there on the internet, in in person, walking down the street, and the same with guys, in person, walking down the street, on the internet, <coughs> out and about, where everybody can see, I see consistency. I'm not so sure. Okay, so what? Where is the inconsistency and non-aggression? Is the question then? Well, the exact the problem reason you were banned from this premises, <laughs> I'd say, you advocated an instance in which violence occurred. Yeah, so violence occurs in this world. It does. That has nothing to do with non-aggression. So if you, have, you, have a, you have different, look, you have different ideas on how things should be. Those are your preferences, right? So if, if the standard here is something other than non-aggression, then feel free to hold me yes, to that standard. Yes, it's a okay. standard. Okay, so, so, but this is the, the, the question I was brought over here and the question what was David raised. I understand that you oppose me for reasons that have nothing to do with non-aggression. David says he opposes me for reasons pertaining to non-aggression, and this is what I'm trying to address. I'm not attempting to adhere to uh, the necessarily whatever standard Garrett has, right? I don't much care for your opinion, sir. The, the problem, the, the issue that I'm trying to address is David saying that I'm advocating violence or something. I'm not advocating initiatory force. I'm not acting on initiatory force. There's a very consistent message of non-aggression in everything that I'm doing. And if that's inconsistent, I, if, you, if you perceive that there's inconsistency in my message or actions of non-aggression, then those I am interested to address. You applaud my actions of violence when they occur. How is that? Uh, thought because of actions of violence that occur against aggressors don't bother me. Yeah. Just as when Rich stands between attackers on the square with a monopod, I support him. Okay, so this is this is the issue at hand. So if you have a different standard than non-aggression, I understand that. Okay, and I understand that you're going to oppose my message. I get that. David is saying that my message is somehow inconsistent with non-aggression, and that's what I'm interested to address. 
my thought on that, on the inconsistency with my aggression is, that, you know, in the in the membership agreement, it says peace is my goal. And my thought on that is, it, it isn't, man, if we could just kill all these motherfuckers, we'd have peace. And that's kind of what I feel like your message is. If we, these motherfuckers were just all goddamn dead, and if, maybe I won't do it, but if we could get more people to kill these fuckers, then there would be peace. Well, and peace, that's peace, is, peace is ultimately that's the goal. So if someone breaks into my house, right, and, and I, you know, have to deal with a, you know, a home invasion robbery, and the intruder ends up dead, there's peace in my house. Yeah, but there's a huge difference between that and killing the fucking postman. Well, I well, actually have not... Hassle. So I have I have made a philosophical argument where the where the postman is an aggressor. I have not actually advocated that anybody shoot the postman, right? I'm not. I'm oh, 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 oh. <coughs> oh, they're happy now. They just wanted to he's, sniff each other. Even though he's pitbull, everybody thinks he's gonna like freak out, but he doesn't know he's pitbull. He's at least six months. <laughs> 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 so if you look, you know, if people bring up like the mailman thing and paper clips, and I just, you know, if people would go and like actually look at that, that'd be really interesting because I think that these things get blown way out of proportion. And maybe I'll wait for Johnson to stop playing with the ball. If, if anybody would like some some in-depth answers to some of Campwell's uh, positions, the garbage, po uh, some garbage podcast episode number. 11. So, but, but well, I think you would ask for David's you know, opinion. I heard Garrett and Johnson respond to your question, but I didn't hear David respond. Okay. David, David, where where do you see me advocating or acting on initiatory force? Uh, I don't know about initiatory force. I'm just thinking what peace. Okay, so then if what you could please, if, if, you have, if, you, if, if you, if you, if you, if you, uh, you have a different standard than, than non-aggression, then feel free to hold to that standard. But I would appreciate if you did not say that I was inconsistent on the non-aggression principle if you can't say that I'm advocating or acting on initiatory force. Because this is something that does upset me, that people are saying things that are untrue. If people are saying things that are true and they just don't like me for whatever reason, I'm not really that so much opposed to that. I expect to have enemies. However, when people say that I'm an advocate of initiatory force or acting on initiatory force, that's incorrect. Well, Johnson well, brought up two instances. I would call initiatory force. Well, you can call whatever you want, but it's not accurate, right? So the, the fact of the matter is, you know, people aggress against you and then you respond with force that's not initiatory force. That's how the world is, you know? People attack you and steal from you and live as a parasite from you, and that's a problem. And, you know, how you choose to address it is up to you. And that, that's a different issue than non-aggression. That's... Um, on the issue, and, and this is an interesting one, Garrett brought up the, uh, uh, you're coming to somebody's house and he came out with a hockey stick and you had bear spray. Was, was a guy the, made a I, threat I against me. A, a, that, there a guy a, that there was a, uh, a challenge to a duel issue at that point? There was a guy who threatened me on the internet because of something that I said. He didn't like a meme that I made. And I, and I know this guy. He's involved with bad people in New York. I was involved with him when I was a drug dealer in New York. He's involved with, you know, not, not gangs as we think of them as Bloods and Crips, but, you know, you'll see them walking around in large numbers and they will hurt people. And so this, uh, this gentleman had made a threat against me on the internet and uh, said that he was going to fuck me up the next time he saw me. And uh, I said, well, then come see me right now because I want to deal with the threat immediately. I don't want to be walking down the street when 10 guys jump on me, which has happened to me in New York before, which is why I have facial scars and broken teeth. So uh, he, in, he said that he was going to come to my uh, office, and he did not so come, and I called him back, and he told me to come to his house, and I did. And he came outside, and he displayed a hockey stick, at which point I pulled pepper spray, at which point he retreated, and I let him. So this is a, this is a, a, a classic case of uh, someone threatening violence against me, me responding to the threat, him escalating the violence, me pulling a superior weapon, and letting the attacker retreat. So this is not a case of initiatory force. And so, again, if you have different standards, then feel free to voice those standards. Don't try to say that I'm not adhering to my own standard of non-aggression. That would be false. Well, I think that you're totally honest and open about your positions, and I appreciate that. Okay, great. Um, but I totally do disagree with him and say that discussion. that is initiation of force. You went onto the person's lawn. After being invited to Sophia. Okay. I, would argue that, I would argue that there are two, two interpretations of that, neither of which support initiation of force. 
One is that it was a challenge duel. It's it's not an issue. Issue. It's a the second issue. is that a threat to fuck somebody up is a credible threat to fuck somebody up. Force has already been initiated at that point because initi the threat of force is equal to the initiation of force. If somebody <coughs> says, standing face to face with me and he says, I'm going to fuck you up, I'm going to pop him right there. Right. And the other thing if I'll I point out about that, that is I probably have treated... The other, the other interesting thing about that is I, in New Hampshire, I'd have probably treated that greatly differently because I can carry a gun in New Hampshire and I can't do that in New York. In New York, I run a serious <laughs> risk of being jumped, okay? I was involved with very bad people in New York. I was a drug dealer. I was, you know, there's, I've been assaulted in New York numerous times, and, and, it's, and there's a very real potential for me to get injured very badly, and I, can't, I cannot carry uh, sufficient weaponry to defend myself against a group of attackers. In New Hampshire, I can do that. So if I'm dealing with, uh, you know, potential threats in New Hampshire, I'm not going to be running up to their fucking houses with my fucking gun. I can carry my gun in New Hampshire, and if I have to respond to a threat, then I can respond to it. In New York, I don't have that opportunity. If I'm attacked in New York, I'm, I'm damn near helpless because I'm, I've been disarmed, and that's a big problem. So, so I have to respond to threats as they arise. You also have up here. Yeah. Did you feel safe? I mean, did you have any presumption that the person whose house you were running up onto might be armed or might use it? Because yes, because he actually was and was ready to <coughs> until I pulled my weapon. And when I pulled my weapon, he retreated, and I allowed him to retreat. I didn't attack him. Okay, but what if he had a firearm and you had your bear spray? It's a pretty safe assumption in New York that someone does not have a firearm. And that's, an, I think, an unfortunate thing that you law. acted based on an assumption of this person not being armed. Well, if the guy pulled out a fucking gun on me, and then I'd probably be the one attempting to retreat. But I had to deal with a threat to my safety was the, was, you know, the, the question. So, again, if you, I know that you have a different standard than non-aggression. So just hold me to that standard and oppose me, right? But it's not an accurate statement to say that I'm an ad advocate or uh, in initiator of force. It's not an accurate statement. It's just plain untrue. So why is it acceptable to retreat in the instance when somebody has a firearm in New York City and if I credibly had a firearm? And then why is it acceptable to kill a, an intruding cop when you know that there's an infinite army of cops coming behind it? Because it's a value judgment that I make for myself, okay? It's, it's the question of initiatory force is not the question then, right? The question is a value judgment that one makes for themselves. If someone initiates force against you and you choose not to respond to that threat, that's a value judgment that you make for yourself. I'm going to live to fight another day. If you decide that you're going to fight that cop, you, you're, you're, you, still have, you still have reached the point of initiatory force. You're responding to a threat. So the, the theoretical question here is if you have the right to use violence in self-defense, you are not obligated to do that. You are making the value judgment for yourself. Right. And so these are preferences that people are exercising. You guys are free to act on your preferences, but it, that, that's a question outside of non-aggression. Okay, so that value judgment is what I see as sort of central to my sort of argument with this. And that value judgment, I think, when you make the value judgment to promote peace, that you make the value judgment to not necessarily defend yourself. It's, it's not absolutely fucking necessary. Wait, and that's where so I'm, peace so is not pacifism, though. There no, I difference. totally agree. Okay. Right. But I think that pacifism, I don't think that you have to be a pacifist in order to be peaceful. However, I do think that you should choose peace every fucking time that is a, a, an option, especially when it comes against the point of where if you in, engage in violence, you're just dead. Well, you know, especially like something, if you're engaging in violence, like violence against the state, you're just fucking dead. Well, we've been, we've, we've been like seeing the tactical we've, judgment, though, with the, was that there was a, necess a necessity to stem this threat in the bud right. in also, order to prevent future violence. Yes, so, and also, before and we get off topic exactly. here, before we, before we move on to this, the other point to add to is I think that it comes to also advocacy. And where I might agree with you on certain moral points, I don't think that it's moral to advocate that certain people go out and do violence because, again, there are a lot of fucking retards out there. All right, define advocate. When you're advocating violence and you're saying, like, hey, we should kill these fuckers. Okay, you know? where, where, which article are you referring to where I said we should kill these fuckers? <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't well, have an article one, that says we should kill the these fuckers. Sure. That's not. That's not a Christopher Cantwell quote. So if you have, you know, if you would like me to go pull up every article, there's a category on my website titled self defense, and that's where you'll find most of the articles where I'm discussing use of force. If you'd like me to grab my laptop, or if somebody else would like to pull it up, and you'd like to look through it and ask me about a finer point, if you look at what I said about Jared Miller in Las Vegas, what I actually said was, don't do this. 
right? I said it's not murder to kill murderers, but don't do it because you're going to end up dead. Right? If anybody read the article, that's what it says. Right. The and same thing read. about Justin Burke. I said, look, I respect your decision, best of luck guy, but you know what? You just traded in your life and now you're not going to be able to do anything. You should have moved to New Hampshire. So, you know, what's, if you're talking about advocacy as in suggesting that a person go out and take a particular action, that's not something that I've actually done. If you actually look at what's happened. If you actually look at that, then what you'll find is me pretty consistently that telling people that that's not a good action. course of action. However, I've said, these people have been pushed to the point where they feel like they have nothing to lose, and I understand why they want to do those things, because I've wanted to do them too. And when they do those things, it's really, it's not unreasonable that they do those things. It really makes a great deal of sense, and I, and I wish people would pay them a little bit more respect. I really do. But I haven't advocated that people go do things. I haven't said, go out and do this. That's not, that's not my words. So my question would be then, why do those people deserve respect? Because that's the word you just used. So if we're going to use direct quotes, why do those people deserve respect? Because they because they, they fucking lashed out violently against people who had violently oppressed them. Jared Miller had been in jail numerous times. He was a victim of the war on drugs. Why is anybody surprised that the people who victimized him got got attacked? Sure, I'm, but I'm not suggesting that. victimized him, there's no suggestion that the people that he targeted had personally targeted him. At any but we also know that the, on the strength of their job, that they were only taking a, a, a you know maybe a one-hour break from the threats of murder that they commit on the right. highways all well, day, every day. exactly what justifies law enforcement calling us, so to speak, a gang. It doesn't is justify that at all. That and, if you, and if you say that it justifies it, then you're the one justifying no, it. Because, I'm not justifying it. Because that. by calling them a gang and referring to them as though they all act in concert and one is just as guilty as another in, in doing an abuse. That's just reinforcing that idea that there's collective responsibility based on a job, based on an association. If, you, if your job and association is, is, look, if you have a blood-in, blood-out pact with the, with, the, you know, with the Aryan Brotherhood in a prison, right, it's safe to assume that you committed the fucking blood-in part, right? The police, you can't be a police officer and be peaceful. It's the, the, the two are completely incompatible. It doesn't make you a murderer when you just said murderer. That's true. When they That's threaten not. people on the highways, when they every traffic stop is a death threat. You know that, right? That they're not they're not politely asking you to stop your car. They're telling you your car's about to stop, whether I run it off the road and shoot you in the face or whether you pull it over and put it in park. It's a death threat. I'm so sure they're threatening to murder people on the highways every day. Excuse me? I'm, fairly sure, I'm sure there's plenty of officers that wouldn't shoot you if you tried to flee. You'd just end up fleeing. Well, give it a shot I, sometime then. But again, I, I, I this, is full circle, this, this is full circle back to that Any advocacy. Who does not shoot back to that advocacy and back to how you react to that situation. Well, how do I react to the situation is by paying the ticket. And I've never actually suggested that anybody do anything else. Well, but that's... Uh, okay, so um, there's an atmosphere that's created. Right, and what we we actually can look at the atmosphere in Manchester where they do open carry trash cleanup, and uh, you know they're they're a little more militant over there, and we can see that their police, who have the nastiest jail and their shittier police, um, call them an armed gang. I mean, like they ran the uh, Area 23 people out of their their area. Here, the pigs. Um, they're pretty good to us, relatively. You know, I mean, they might be, they beat up our gay guy every once in a while. But I mean, other than that, <laughs> oh, you know, no. other than kidnapping yeah, people yeah, and blocking them no, no, in cages for months and years at a clip, other than that, yeah, you know, I guess they're small guys. I uh, jail, and that cost me a woman that I dearly love. I can, so, I concur with you on, on that. that. They also drop things. Well, sometimes yeah, they drop things too, to but the fact that a murderer out. sometimes chooses not to kill you doesn't make him any yeah, any if, better. That a kidnapper chooses doesn't always kidnap everybody. Yeah, if, if, if rapists wear like condoms, I don't think it's worth to be praised upon them for doing so. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Teach you how to talk to the police. Number one, don't. Well, okay, so we're all clear what the police do for a living. Everybody on the porch. We don't need to go through it. Um, but what the difference is is how much do we want? How many sticks do we wish? To, and how often do we wish to poke the tiger? And like the way you talk online, I'm not saying in real life generally. The way you talk online pokes the tiger with a stick. And um, you know that's my only concern is is look I'm I'm as yeah. on the edge on this one as you guys are. I get it. Mm. But have you read my <laughs> definition of civil disobedience? 
I'd say no, that civil right. disobedience is like poking a bear with a sharp stick in order to prove, in order to illustrate the danger of keeping and arming bears, and that the drawback to the method is that the demonstration is effective if and only if the demonstrator is mauled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not advocating for civil disobedience. I, however, would okay. advocate um, that um, you know I, I tend to advocate against open carry for, uh, for reasons like. It pisses off the cops really bad. It scares the shit out of them.